Hi, this is Kevin with Wordvice, and today we're going to talk about paraphrasing. What does paraphrasing mean? Well, paraphrasing is putting someone else's work into your own words instead of quoting directly. Paraphrasing can save space, it can truncate the information in a research paper, and it can distill the complex information that may exist in another study and make your study easier to understand. So how do quoting and paraphrasing differ exactly? Well, when you quote, you essentially copy and paste the exact words of another researcher into your own study. Every time you quote, you must use citations and quotation marks regardless of formatting guidelines. A paraphrase, on the other hand, may use some key terms from the original text, but must use new language to express this idea. When you paraphrase, you do not need to include quotation marks, but you must still use citations. Let's look at one example to see how a quote and a paraphrase differ. First, a quote. Davidson notes, in heart patient sample groups experiencing even mild tumor hypoxia, uptake of 300 cc injected Feniflux was reduced by one third for each 0.05% of increased hypoxia in the tumored organ. And the citation follows this. Now the paraphrase. Davidson concluded that the tumor hypoxia can impact the delivery and efficacy of anti-cancer drugs. Citation. This paraphrase differs significantly from the quote in length, structure, and word choice. It is shorter and gives the gist or provides the main point of the original text. To place only very specific lines or details from another work into your study, use a combination of quotes and paraphrasing. Davidson, citation, concluded that tumor hypoxia poses a problem for doctors administering anti-cancer drugs, since even in tumors with mild hypoxia, uptake of 300 cc injected Feniflux was reduced by one third for each 0.05% of increased hypoxia. Note that while in the paraphrase version, key terms remain, they reserve the quotes for very specific details, which cannot be paraphrased easily and might be essential to the paper. So when do you paraphrase and when do you quote? Let's take a look at some situations where one method might be preferable to the other. You should paraphrase to show you understand the main ideas or arguments of the author, to help explain difficult concepts or terminology, to highlight original ideas that are interesting when the original language is not as interesting, to change the emphasis of information to match your own arguments, or to provide a clear voice in your paper that isn't directly connected to other works. You should use quotes when the original wording is strong and engaging on its own, if the quote is very well known or difficult to paraphrase well, where the exact words of an authority would lend support to your own ideas, or when you want to present the author's detailed methods or findings or exact stated position. Keep in mind that you should not paraphrase too often as it can take away some of the strength of the original content. Similarly, you shouldn't quote too often as well as it can take away the authorial voice of your own paper. What you want to do is maintain a balance by using ample quotes and paraphrases in conjunction. So here are some steps you can take to paraphrase effectively. First, read the source material until you fully understand what the author's meaning is. That is, what is he or she saying not only in details, but what is the larger picture. And it might take three or four readings at least to digest this information. Second, take some notes that include key terms of the original passage. Third, write your own paragraph without looking at the source material. Use only the key terms that you wrote down in step two. Fourth, double check to make sure that your version captures all of the important parts and especially the intent of the original. Finally, don't forget your in-text citation. You want the reader to be sure where your paraphrasing begins and where it ends. Now, let's take a look at a detailed example of how to paraphrase source material. First, the original source text. The journal primarily considers empirical and theoretical investigations that enhance understanding of cognitive, motivational, affective, and behavioral psychological phenomenon in work and organizational settings, broadly defined. Those psychological phenomenon can be at one or multiple levels, individuals, groups, organizations, or cultures. In work settings such as business, education, training, health, service, government, or military institutions, and in the public or private sector, for-profit or non-profit organizations. So after you've read this a few times to determine what the gist of the content is, you need to write down some key terms. Some of the key terms I took away were empirical and theoretical investigations, enhance understanding, psychological phenomena, 
settings, and levels. These are the terms you can use in your paraphrase of this content. Here's an example of an acceptable paraphrase of this source text. The Journal of Applied Psychology accepts studies that increase understanding of a broad range of psychological phenomena and that apply to a variety of settings. The studies can be set or observed from a number of levels, from the individual to larger subgroups, and are not limited to institution or sector. Note that the ideas are the same as in the source text, but the language and phrasing has been changed and truncated or shortened. Also note that there is a citation at the end of the paraphrase. Next, let's look at a combination sentence, one that uses both quotes and paraphrasing. The Journal of Applied Psychology accepts studies that enhance understanding of cognitive, motivational, affective, and behavioral psychological phenomena, and that apply to a variety of settings such as business, education, training, health, service, government, or military institutions. The studies can be set or observed from a number of levels and are not limited to institution or sector. In this combination example, the details from the original source are in quotes, as they are in succession and provide important information that readers might need to know. Finally, let's take a look at an example of something you might want to avoid, that is plagiarism. Here's a plagiarized version of the source text. Note that many of the key terms and even phrases are written word for word in this version. Now in this plagiarized version, some of the words of the original have been changed or removed, but the meanings and even the grammar structure are essentially identical to the source text. The reason this is plagiarized is that there are no quotation marks. So be very careful not to use the exact same language unless you're putting quotation marks around the content. When paraphrasing, you can show your position to the content you're discussing by choosing a verb that shows whether you're in agreement, in disagreement, or are neutral to the content being discussed. Here are some examples of verbs you can use to show your position. These verbs show that you are neutral to the content being discussed. Believe, conclude, propose, argue, observe, and write. For instance, Young, citation, believes that the cause of this problem is X. Johnson et al., citation, propose several solutions to this problem, including X, Y, Z. The verbs believe and propose both merely show what the author is thinking or doing. They do not indicate any particular position that you might have on these topics. To show agreement with the statement you're paraphrasing, use verbs such as these. Show, demonstrate, evidence, prove, point out, confirm. For instance, Brooks, citation, showed how nitrogen was essential to the development of life. Garcia demonstrates the efficiency of this method of analysis when applying it to X. Citation. Both of these terms, showed and demonstrates, have fairly positive connotations and indicate that you generally agree with how the original work was performed or analyzed. To show your disagreement with the work that you're paraphrasing, use verbs such as these. Neglect, overlook, disregard, pay little attention to, fail to note. For instance, Although the author of this study says that robins account for 10% of North American neighborhood birds, he neglects to include the most important method of analysis. Citation. Mabeki, citation, disregards additional potential contributing factors, citing only X and Y as being instrumental. Both terms, neglects and disregards, carry fairly negative connotations and indicate that you generally disagree with how the author carried out their work or analyzed it. How you paraphrase will generally depend on the context and the specific reason for putting another author's work into your study. But there are some tools and tips you can use to help put their words into your own. One way to do this is to change the voice of the passage. If the original is written in the active voice, change it to the passive and vice versa. If the original study reads as follows, a study of infant feeding practices was carried out, you might paraphrase, like this. In her study of breastfeeding, Carnes, citation, found that only one-fifth of mothers nurse their babies. By changing the voice, you can alter the syntax of the sentence and make room for your own words to describe the original author's meaning. Another tool you can use to describe content in your own way is a thesaurus. But be careful when using a thesaurus. You want to make sure you understand the term you're using and that it makes sense in the context you're using it. The last tip is more of a reminder. You want to avoid looking at the work when you're writing your paraphrase. Instead, give yourself 10 to 20 seconds after reading the passage. 
your mind needs a little bit of time to digest what the meaning of the passage is. And then go ahead and write your paraphrase. By giving yourself some time, you'll make sure not to plagiarize the text. Before we go, here are some rules for paraphrasing you should keep in mind. The paraphrase statement must always be written in your own words. Never copy the text verbatim unless you use quotation marks. Always include a citation when you paraphrase. Usually, these things, parentheses, because you're always using someone else's work even though it's in your own words. Finally, always keep your study at the focus of your writing. That means you don't want to quote too often and you don't want to paraphrase too often. So try to keep a blend of both so that you have a strong authorial voice but that you also have external support for your own arguments. For more excellent tips on academic and research writing, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit WordVice's resources page where you'll find dozens of articles to help you improve your paper composition. Stay tuned and happy writing.